What's going on guys? Thank you so much for tuning in Lades Hoops. Welcome back to March Madness. Last year I uploaded every single day from the month of March and we are doing it again this year. If you're new here and enjoy daily NBA related content, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as we are on the road to 3,000 subscribers. Just last week I posted a video, something along the lines of one thing to respect about every Western Conference NBA All-Star. Today we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna talk about the Eastern Conference NBA All-Stars. Let's waste no more time and get into this with the team captain. Giannis Antetokounmpo, and the thing I respect about Giannis is his attitude and his dedication to winning. Um, as a man drafted in the butt end of the lottery, uh, international prospect with really nothing to show other than being quick and skinny and tall, uh, he has just grown and developed into a winner with a hell of an attitude, put on a ton of muscle, created a mid-range jump shot. Uh, back to the basket game that is so deadly not to mention he is a force to be reckoned with on the defensive side of the ball uh, you can definitely just expect the dedication to getting better dedication to winning etc etc i'm not sure where the bucks will finish this season last year was obviously a bit of a letdown as they lost to miami but miami made the finals so how much of a letdown is it really um, regardless, speaking of Miami, the next all-star we're going to talk about is Bam Adebayo. What I respect about Bam is his offensive growth and his ability to be a backseat superstar. Uh, there's really seemingly no egos out there in Miami. In South Beach, though, come playoff time, we kind of all know it's Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Buckets, it's Jimmy Basketball. And Bam Adebayo does a really great job of playing second fiddle and some nights even third fiddle to Jimmy and or Jimmy and Tyler. Uh, Bam is just a great, great, great player. Uh, his offensive growth, as I mentioned, has been amazing. He's you know developed an elbow jump shot that is a little bit reminiscent of some DeAndre Ayton, Tim Duncan-esque. You know, DeAndre Ayton, like... 2020 DeAndre and had a crazy mid-range jump shot um, but on defense Bam is an, a defensive player of the year candidate every single year he shows up every night just a great player with a great attitude off the court as well Next, we got Tyrese Halliburton, and what I respect about him um, is bringing back the quote-unquote traditional point guard archetype. Uh, now, I say quote-unquote because I would argue he's not really that traditional of a point guard. Um, he really is kind of his own beast, his own you know type of player. Um, but if we're talking about the type of guys that average 20 and 10, uh, you know, Halley is that guy. He, you know, he reminds us of the Chris Pauls, the Steve Nashes. Um, but some would argue his offensive bag is a little deeper, a little better. Um, you know, the Pacers are fun. They're exciting. We'll have to see what it looks like in the playoffs with Pascal Siakam. They don't need to win anything this year. But if they win a first round series, you know, that's great for Indiana. Not to mention, I've said this a couple times on this channel, but I really enjoy him off the court been on JJ Reddick's podcast I want to say four times now maybe even more um, definitely one of the most if not the most recurring guests on that show next we got Damian Lillard and what I respect about Dame is similar to his teammate Giannis is Dame's work ethic uh, Damian Lillard he's never backed away from you know proving people wrong and just being great uh, obviously you know he was at Weaver State not a very big school uh, gets taken fifth in the NBA draft people still say it's too high uh, comes out, battles Kobe Bryant in his uh, you know rookie opener, and just uh, since then his career has been fireworks. Um, you know I wouldn't say it's been fireworks from a re resume standpoint. Um, obviously he's got you know the three point champion and dunk contest and this that and the other. But you know when it comes to the postseason he's he hasn't been you know anything uh, close to special if you will. He has some iconic moments. You know the game winner at Houston. Game six, he's got the game winner against Oklahoma City. I think that was game five to put it away. Um, you know, Dame time is something around the league that we know. I just hope that, uh, you know, soon we know him a little more for, or a little less for what he does in the regular season and a little more for what he does in the postseason. A guy with a similar case, uh, Joel Embiid. I respect him bringing dominance back to the center position. I just really do hope that he starts to win something in the postseason, gets some hardware, maybe even makes the NBA Finals. Because, um, you know, it's one thing to go out there and win an MVP, and then the next season you're averaging 35. That's great. You know, ask James Harden how that is. You know, it looks good in the moment. It feels great in the moment. But in a couple of years from now, man, it, people are going to get tired of it. The voters fatigue is going to set in. They want you to win, big guy, and uh, I do too. Sticking with the Jays, we got Jason next. Uh, this is really random, but something I just respect about Jason Tatum is his bag. Uh, 
he has such a unique dribble package. Um, the way he shoots the ball is just butter, you know, as the announcer for the C's say. Um, I, I do want to say he's a little bit inefficient, but I do love his bag, and I think he's got a really great mentality. And the same thing for another J, his teammate Jalen. I think Jalen's mindset for basketball is it's very solid. You know, he goes out there and he gives it his all every night. He's a great defender. A lot of people give him shit for his left hand or lack of left hand. But I just really do enjoy watching Jalen Brown play basketball on his best night and his worst because even when he's not doing well offensively or stuffing the stat sheet, he's still giving it all, giving it his all. My apologies on defense. Next, we got Donovan Mitchell. And what I respect about Donovan is his passing abilities growth. And I respect that since he's come into the NBA, he's been a number one option. He's been a leader. Uh, it was never a growing point for him. You know, he comes out of Louisville. I think it was Louisville or UConn. UConn? No, I think it's Louisville. You know, since he's come into the NBA, uh, just drafted to Denver, gets traded to Utah, bang, instantly, you know, bringing them into playoff contention, battling for rookie of the year, this, that, and the other. Uh, hell of a player, continue to grow. Mitchell, I, I made a video, you know, basically saying he shouldn't be a number one option, but he's somewhat proving me wrong in Cleveland, so I guess we're going to have to see what happens in the postseason. Next, we got Paolo Benquero, and what I respect about him is his year two leap and his insane leadership for how young he is. If you guys ever watch um, anything involving the magic, whether it's Franz Wagner on JJ's pod or Paolo on JJ's pod, uh, or you watch Jamal Mosley at the post game, Joe Ingles um, talk about Paolo. It's always the same narrative that Paolo, in his first year, just grabbed the team by the reins and was a leader. Uh, they're winning games this season. You know, they're they're in the playoff contention, playing contention, whatever you want to say. Uh, very fun Orlando Magic team, and it starts with Paolo. Next, we got Scotty Barnes, uh, and what I respect about him is beating the sophomore slump allegations. I never thought he was going to be a bad NBA player. Uh, and that's not to sound arrogant. It's just I watched a lot of his content um, as he was, uh, you know, progressing in the league. And he's really about his business. He's really about getting better. There's some other allegations he might not beat. Um, if you know, you know. But uh, I got a lot of respect for Scotty. Next, we got Jalen Brunson. And honestly, I'm not even going to say anything because there's too much I respect about his game. Um, and him as a person. Uh, I just saw he started doing his podcast. I'm going to have to watch a couple episodes of that. Keep killing stuff, Jalen. I'm sure New York loves you like I do. Next, we got Tyrese Maxey, and I respect his scoring champion style of play. I wouldn't be surprised if he rattles off a 30-point-per-game season in the near future. Insanely talented, insanely electric, fun-to-watch, great NBA player. Next, we got Trey Young. Uh, I respect that even though he's a snub every year, he is a star-caliber, all-star starter every year. I mean, tell me five people ever literally ever who have averaged 28 and 10 and then not made it unless a reserve gets injured. It's just a little ridiculous to me at this rate. Next, we got Julius Randle, or finally we got Julius Randle. And I respect that he is a dominant force, and he's kind of bringing that pressure back to the power forward position, that back to the basket. Uh, Kevin Garnett, you know, made me laugh my ass off the other week, that clip when he's talking to Paul Pierce, and he's screaming out you know Julius Randle will bone you he will bone your ass just you know going crazy on him Julius hell of a player love to watch uh when he's shot chucking it's pretty hard though you got to look away um but what do you guys think uh what was I right about what was I wrong about what do you respect about these players let me know in the comments below who's your favorite NBA all-star out east uh if this sounds like a low energy video I'm sorry I'm just kind of fighting some head sickness uh regardless I'm gonna get these videos out for you guys I love you all have a great rest of your day stay happy health and blessed peace